Hey everyone, how's it going? Octopus here and welcome back to Ever Crisis. Um, we had one of the biggest streams today that I've had in maybe the longest time. We had over 500 people. We did a bunch of polls. I'll be having that poll video coming up very, very soon. And we spent hours talking about Sephiroth's builds, Sephiroth's teammates, his limit breaks, everything. I sat there and I math and math and math and I did too much math. So this video is going to be everything Sephiroth that you need to know as of now, and if anything changes, I'll leave it down in the comment section or in my Discord. So, if you guys ever want to catch any live streams or the Discord channel, all the links will be down below. For now, let's jump into Sephiroth and let's talk about him, because he's really good. Alright, so you're here because you're deciding what do you want to pull for uh, Sephiroth, what do you want best in slot. Uh, Lucia's weapon's incredible, by the way. I'll just throw that in there now. It's incredible. It's going to go hand-in-hand -hand with Sephiroth. It's going to go hand-in-hand -hand to the high score challenge. She's got ice resist down. Not only that, that weapon is just super strong. So she just became like a big main DPS character in two areas, ice and water, plus the rest of her kit is fantastic. So besides that, Sephiroth here... He is probably the best DPS in the game at the moment because of his costume, his support character, Lucia, and just his weapon. His kit also features the first weapon to give magic attack up on the character. There is nothing else in the game that boosts our damage up besides lower the enemy's defense. So he's got one of the best kits at the moment, and because of that, he is the top DPS in the game. All right, so let's check out his wish list. Now, for me, I ended up doing this wish list right here. If you guys want to check it out, it was a little bit different. But now that I've really thought about Sephiroth and in the high score challenge coming out, this is what I really recommend. Uh, Murasami and Mary Time is there for my personal Cloud because Cloud is still one of my DPS. Sephiroth is our magic attack damage dealer. Cloud is the physical attack damage dealer. They're going to be in their own places, doing their own thing, both being incredible DPSs, because some e enemies are very susceptible to magic, some are very susceptible to physical. They take more from either one. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what makes Sephiroth so great. And it's this sword right here, but his feature weapon, plus his costume. If you don't get the costume, I'll have a build for you guys. But this costume is as good as Cloud's first costume, and these are the best costumes in the game. Increases ice ability damage by 35%. Alright, so that on top of like everything else that's going to go into this kit just makes Sephiroth such a beast. So if you are pulling, you're pulling for the costume because weapons come back like every other weapon has come back. Uh, Eris weapon came back. The Umbrella's there, Red 13, Seaside Caller, they're not seasonal. They're all there, so these weapons will come back. Costume is important. Now, the Edge Wing is his main feature weapon. This weapon boosts magic attack by 24. If you get extra copies, 34, max out 40. Really, really good with maxed out boost ice potential as well. It's a win win. This is Murasami or Mary Time, just in magic form. Now, this also comes with X Sigil. So you get 20% magic boost on one of your materials. You get X Sigil Breaker. You have huge boost and you have a good amount of damage at maxed out and non maxed out for magic damage it's also ice so this is going to go hand in hand with the high score challenge but it's ice along with our weapon and our armor so this is hands down definitely want to get multiple copies of this if you guys can there's nothing more i need to say about that his nameless is the one you're going to get for free it should be in your gift box right now i don't like this weapon i think it has its moments i think it's going to become in situational but if you watch my previous video where I talk about how the buffs and debuffs work in this game, you're basically going to see that this only has mid defense down. You cannot get full three stack defense down with this weapon no matter what you do besides adding another high potency one, which then it makes it pointless. The only cool thing about this, it costs two ATV gauge, which is like, okay, every two gauges I can cast this. That makes it really good because he's got that sigil break here of the triangle, the up and down. So when you ever see like those bosses where they do X, circle, triangle, and after you break that, you have to break an extra sigil that's not part of it. Well, with only two cast, you can get through that really quickly. So in those situations, you're going to pull it nameless and be like, okay, I got through that diamond really quick. We broke the enemy. We got the extra damage phase. Cool. He does have magic defense down, which is for Sephiroth's kit, but it's not max, so it can work. But then his R abilities don't support his damage at all. The sword is actually a physical sword, 535, and it's physical damage when it's going to be part of a magic debuff. It doesn't make any sense. So, situational, very awkward, physical, 
but it lowers magic defense. I don't see the point of this one. Not hating it completely, but it's going to have very niche moments. So that's a big old skip for me on multiple copies. Now, this one is the other physical one, and I like this one kind of because it has a really big, and I know this is like whale status, but it's got 48 points into limit break, right? If you can get built up your limit break really quickly, an extra 70% damage is pretty cool, and it boosts his physical attack up by 40. So I can see this being a good sub weapon, but for what it is right now, it's another physical, and he's not really built towards physical. It's AoE physical, so that's pretty cool. So he can be, but honestly, i rather not. The only thing cool about this blade that's really, really awesome is that it has Earth Materia Boost 30%. That's really good. So if you need an Earth build and you have a really good Quake in your kit, throw this on. Quake Blow, to be exact. Really good weapon. Besides that, not on his main kit. We're making a Magic Attack Sephiroth. Now, this is the bread and butter. Get this. Get multiple copies of this. This thing's amazing. At level 90, only what it is, it has a self-cast of magic attack up mid, potency up to high. It can This is the only weapon in the game that buffs a character's magic attack up. And it's only for him, he can't put it on anyone else. It also applies regen, which I keep hearing now that if you apply regen to a character, the ATB gauge fills up quicker. So uh, it's not verified, but some people in chat were saying that when they cast this, they found their ATB gauge was going much faster, which would explain Red 13's regen and him being a very fast ATB caster as well. So that's not really the point there. If that does work like that, that makes this weapon even better. But for the most part, this is the only weapon in the game to increase three tiers of magic attack up. He also gets healed, regen, so overall very good, and you got boost ability over here for extra damage and survivability. This weapon is his best, period. It's gonna be used on every magic build that Sephiroth has until we get an AOE buffer or our healers get buffs and they can buff Sephiroth, right? For now, this is his best weapon. Uh, the materia doesn't really matter. Heal potency, which is nice if you want to cure, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now, this weapon I'm ignoring completely. It, it's, it's another physical weapon for his physical build, you could build physical Sephiroth, but his magic build is superior. It does have 20 boosts to physical over there, but then it's got 10 and 10. So this one is all defense. Physical attack down. Sephiroth shouldn't be wasting four ATV gauges to lower the enemy's physical attack down. Every character that's going to be running in his party is going to take care of that already, right? Especially Tifa. Tifa is going to be a really good character to run with uh, Sephiroth. So I wouldn't recommend this one either. It's not part of the magic build. It just lowers physical attack down, and we have many, many characters for that. So that's a total ignore. Now, these are two his element builds. This one's for fire, high score challenge coming out. So I would recommend considering pulling for this one just because of that. And it's got really good 20% magic attack boosters to go along with this magic weapon. At max though, it does go up to 520, which is really, really strong. 280, just the basic, has boost attack and boost fire, which could be used as a sub weapon. Very good, solid one. This one is absolutely incredible as well. It doesn't boost the most magic, but you could see 12 points in lightning for the basic. Multiple copies, 32, maxed out 48. As a sub weapon, that's 24 towards anyone's lightning build. This thing is one of the strongest for sub weapon boost lightning, or if it's in the main hand, right there alone, you're at 48 points, right? You're getting 70% lightning boost damage just by equipping this, and then you add other things to get all the way to 120. This weapon's really good. Only 27 boost magic, but with sub weapons, you can get maxed out, making Sephiroth a very strong lightning build, but we got Cloud for that already. But again, Cloud's physical, he's magical. So I think this weapon's really strong. Magic ability 20%, and only two tens, which is meh. But solid weapon, solid weapon, elemental damage, you can't go wrong in the game. On his last weapon over here, before we get to the final one, is another one that is, uh, I, I wouldn't really cast this one. Like if I'm going to pull for something, it wouldn't be this one. The magic attack is all right. He boosts himself with defense up to high potency. One cast is medium. It's got regen. It, it, yeah, this one for me is definitely a no. It's a uh, Sephiroth's your DPS. He's not there to take care of himself. If it's for the quest later on, he's got a solo something, sure. But for your main team setup, this one's a skip for me. This can be used as a sub weapon in one of the whale builds that I'll talk about. 
because it's got boost magic ability potency on it, which really nice and survivability. So sub weapon solid. Now the last one is his best in slot for just big damage. You can see already 500% crit weapon, it's got boost, it's got boost ability potential. It's got great materia slots for water, 30% water. So he's got an earth one and he's got a water one. So, and everything else here is 20%, 20%, 30%. This is like his big damage one, the Shinra blade, right? And the max though, this thing does 940%, non-elemental. This is gonna be key build when you have to face something that has elemental resistance, like floor 30 and floor 50, the battle tower, the giant is resistant to all elements. So if you bring in any kind of build with element, you're not gonna do damage. But with this, you will do damage. It's got good R abilities, good damage, it crits, and its materia slots are incredible. Its stats as well are fantastic at max, even at not max. This is one of the best weapons you can pick up for him to do every situation that's not elemental weakness. So that's an overall view of Sephiroth's weapons. To break this down, yes, 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 and then situational yes. Everything else you can ignore. One, two, three, four. They're using very, very small situations or in uh, substats for other characters. So for party members, Sephiroth is going to be going really, really hand and well with a Nightbloom Aerith. AKA this should be, don't ignore where the weapons are, but this should be Fairy Tail and that should be Side Weapon. You're going to cast one Nightbloom for one Magic Defense down, and then Aerith's going to cast her gloves over here, which is the Kaiser Knuckles. It's going to lower Magic Defense down medium, immediately giving turn one three tiers down on the enemy, and then Sephiroth's going to buff himself on that same turn. So turn one, defense down, and then you're going to give yourself a medium buff up. Immediately in turn two, you're going to start casting your damage on ice or whatever your current blade is. This is one of his really good setups when it comes to any kind of elemental. This is just, okay, he's weak to fire, weak to thunder, weak to ice. You bring this in. You can even bring this in if they're uh, resistant to everything. You still got to lower their magic defense down. Now, if they're weak to ice, you're going to run a Tifa who's a healer, get her healing gloves, and you're going to replace Aerith, pull her out, and put in Lucia with her new weapon. Because that's going to be ice build number one. Sephiroth, Shiva, ice armor, ice weapon, magic attack boost up. Tifa is going to be your healer, right? And the sub weapon is going to be this to put defense down. It's not going to be three tiers, but if you do max this out, it will be three tiers defense down in one cast. And then Lucia has her weapon, her new gun, that resists ice resist down. So just like uh, Red 13's Seaside Caller for Lightning, Lucia will be over here taking that slot of Aerith if Tifa's your healer. You can also do Matt as your healer and defense down and Lucia. That's another option. Zack can also come in here with Aerith because Zack does have defense, mag uh, magic defense down. If you guys need any of these kind of charts, I do got them down in my Discord. You can see Somersault, Magic Defense Down comes from Matt, comes from Zach, and it comes from T uh, Tifa. So you have those options to give support to Sephiroth. Now with anything else, parties are situational. You can use whatever you want as long as you have a healer, main DPS, and something to support it. Like I said, Zach can come in there for the Magic Defense Down and also use like the Umbrella and Magic Cast and whatever he needs to do to help Sephiroth with that Magic DPS race. So parties are situational. Those are just very good ideas. If you wanted something, let's jump into how to build Sephiroth to give him the be best main weapon and sub weapons. Now, I'm not really done building this uh, chart yet, but I will be putting these graphs in my discord. Uh, this is Sephiroth's best build when it comes to like a free to play setup. You can see the magic sword buffer, the ice damage, Shiva, the ice armor. It's just his strongest setup. There is other setups I will show you that don't involve the ice setup, but when it comes to this, there's two key weapons you can see here. Weapon number one is the Silver Staff from Aerith, and weapon number two is Matt's Absolute, I believe it's called. That is also very staple in this build. Then you can bring in like Aerith's Umbrella, uh, Zax, I believe, Defender. Uh, it's either Zax or Cloud's Defender, it's called Defender, and this is Cloud's Enhancer. 
So these three can be changed around and there's other weapons you can also interchange into this. This is just a general idea before I jump back in the game and I'll have these charts later on organized, name, templates and all that. Just wanted to quickly show you if you know what the weapons look like, then you can quickly copy and paste this. But let's jump into game and actually talk about why this all works. So you already know ice damage, ice damage, ice damage because this build is just ridiculous. And then magic attack up is his staple second weapon no matter what. Then you got his sub weapons and the, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to increase the most magic boost you can get, ice potency, and then anything else you can throw in there. And when you think about it as a free to play player, if you've got the umbrella and you don't, you can also switch out for like the Hauser, you can switch out for the Defender, the other weapons I just finished showing you, right? You switch that umbrella, but the staple ones is there's an other weapon that does boost attack and boost ice. It's just that Aerith Silver Staff has the most magic attack raw stat out of all of them, right? So you're going to get 24 points off of that, which is cut in half for 12 and four for ice here. Then you got the Absolute Royal, which boosts your ma magic attack, our ability, and ice. So another four from here and 12 here. And then you got the Umbrella that boosts, again, the magic attack for another 12. So we're taking 24 magic attack plus Sephiroth, just a normal 90 weapon. You got 24. You're going into 48 just from having one copy of each, giving you magic attack plus 100 and a 40 boost. You're only one tier away with this build because of that. So you want to be able to go in there and bring that set up for that extra magic boost. And then you have the extra ice boost here, which again is four, eight, which would be 18. So you get nine and then including your level 90 here, another nine putting you at 25% ice ability. This is the free to play style where you were super unlucky and only got one of each. This build only gets stronger the more copies you have. And this build is also interchangeable depending on what you have for ice damage. So again, in my Discord, you can scroll here and go to my elemental chart and it shows that all the ice weapons are right here. So you got that Defender, which has 48 ice. You can put in this build and then Hanser, the Silver Staff and the Absolute. All of these are his ice options to increase that ice damage up. And then, of course, you have the magic damage up. So anything from here to increase. Nope, not that one. This one. Anything here to increase just magic damage by 40 points if you max it out. If not, it's the regular. So you're going to be able to pull any of these. It's just know that this one and this one are like his two best. Cloud's Mithril Sword and... Aerith's Umbrella. Everything else will just give you that magic boost up with different elements. So if you are doing the Fire Sword, you can use the... what it, This one is Barret's Fire Weapon for more fire potency. If you have an Earth build for that Earth Materia, you can use more Earth potency here. Ice, Thunder Potency, whatever build you need, it's all there. So you kind of pick and choose to replace those weapons. But coming back to the actual sub weapons, these two are probably his staple. They're very, very good. If you don't choose another ice weapon, if you don't have the ice weapons, choose more magic boosting or attack boosting our abilities. You mix that all together, including the umbrella having the boost magic here. When this is up, you'll have 15% extra magic damage. So this is the free to play one. That's pretty much the idea. Mix that around. I'll have the charts down below for the alternatives. But this is, the, if you get him, stick this on. The umbrella doesn't have to be here. Again, this is the one that can move around. These two are what you want to aim for. So those are the free to play setups, right? What if you're someone who's spending money in the game or you want the best of the best? There is multiple best of the best situations. And one is starting with ice weakness. If you're going to be doing the best of the best ice damage Sephiroth, you're going to have a maxed out. Uh, main weapon, the attack, magic attack up. You're going to have his armor, the ice Shiva fully maxed out, umbrella maxed out. You're going to have the enhancer and the silver. This is for an ice build. Now, there is other ice weapons like I showed you in those charts that you can replace here. But if you use these specific weapons, you will max out his magic attack. You will get ice potency all the way up to level eight right here 65 points giving you ice ability damage plus 100 you could put this ice build a little further if you don't use umbrella you could bring in that absolute royale again but umbrella applies the max attack boost with the main weapon and because this will be maxed out another 15 percent magic here so it's either 10 percent into ice ability or 15 percent into overall magic damage 
So this combination all together will give you one of the hardest hitting Sephiroths that is out there. This has a little bit more room to push into boost attack, to boost in more boost magic ability. But the general idea is that you're getting a ton of magic uh, up. You're getting a ton of boost ice damage and he's just going to hit like a truck. Now, what happens if they are not weak to ice? Well, it's the same front page. You still want to boost your ice damage. They're just not resistant or weak to it, but his ice build is still going to be very, very strong. Let's just say they have no elemental weakness and they're not resistant to anything. You're going to run Umbrella. You're going to run the Defender. And again, Defender is here. It has heal. It's useless, but it's got 48 boost ice. And again, this is the whale builds. The last two I just showed you, this one and the previous one. And then you're going to bring in his own weapon here for survivability and magic boost because you're going to get a total of 36 points giving you magic ability damage plus 60 percent because again we don't we're not using ice resistance so this plus the umbrella because it also has the boost and it has the boost magic to max out with this one and then because of the ice you combine the 24 plus a max of weapon here of 36 you're going to 60 points which is 85 percent damage in ice so you have 85% damage in ice. You've got 60% uh, damage in stance. You also got another, if you max this one out, another 15 in here of magic damage up as well. Plus all of that just going nuts. Even though they're not weak to ice, they're still going to take a lot of damage from that ice. And now the final build for whale status, or anyone that has multiple copies of these weapons, is a build that is not weak it's resist everything you know like floor 30 floor 50 this is the one that resists everything you're going to change his armor if you don't have any other armor because this armor does do that but it does boost magic so keeping it on is still good right but if you have the other one that's okay you're going to use his limit break that increases his magic attack up or you can run this one as well it has physical or magical elemental damage i would probably run the buff up just to have that constantly going and then you'd run his crit weapon which has non-elemental, right? It's going to boost attack. It's going to boost ability. It's going to boost whatever the magic gives again. And then back here is going to be Umbrella, the Absolute, and the Mithril. All this combined gives you max again for the boost magic. It gives you the side abilities. And it gives you for that max boost magic. That's what you're trying to do here. Because we don't have the main ice weapon... It doesn't have that max boost in front. You have to get it from your sub weapons. So that's why you're bringing in this. At max, it's got 40 points, which is 20. At max, this one has 40 points, which is 20. You're now at 40. And then Umbrella brings in another 20, which is 60 altogether, bringing you over here at the maximum magic attack. So this is just to give you that edge with all the stances and the buffs. You're going to be able to do damage to someone who's resistant and still get a ton of damage in there. So these are the builds for whales, the builds for free to play and the party setup. The rest you can mix match. I have the chart to my discord or you can just look it up or go through your inventory to see what you can replace in there. But these are just general ideas. They're not dead set. Later on, Severoth can get more physical weapons. I'm not going to cover those because I think his magic build should be shined on. So for now, this is what Sephiroth's best in slots look like until we decide to test a little bit more from here. So that's pretty much everything, guys. I will be talking about this more in Discord. My live streams linked down below. I hope something here helps you guys out. Please don't feel like you need any of this to make Sephiroth good. You can put on whatever weapons, whatever boosts a little bit here, a little bit there. It still will work. You don't have to go for any of this. So keep that in mind. These are just suggestions and what looks really good on paper. Besides that, have fun with Sephiroth. He's a great unit. He looks good and his moves are really cool. Animations are too long. And I don't like how the camera turns on his main blade. It's terrible. But besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep on smiling and I'll smell you later.